June 23rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible 1 Chronicles chapters 12 through 14 of the Old Testament These were the men who joined David in Ziklag when he was banished from the presence of Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who assisted him in battle. They were armed with bows and could shoot arrows or sling stones right or left-handed. They were fellow tribesmen of Saul from Benjamin. These were Ahiezer, the leader, and Joash, the sons of Shemaiah, the Gibeathite, Jeziel and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, Berachah, Jehu, the Anothothite, Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, one of the thirty warriors and their leader, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad, the Gedorathite, Eluzai, Jerimoth, Beliah, Shemariah, Shephatiah, the Hurufite, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer, and Jeshobim, who were Korahites, and Joela, and Zabida, the sons of Jehoram from Gedor. Some of the Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the desert. They were warriors who were trained for battle. They carried shields and spears. They were as fierce as lions and could run as quickly as gazelles across the hills. Ezer was the leader, Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbani the eleventh. These Gadites were military leaders. The least led a hundred men, the greatest a thousand. They crossed the Jordan River in the first month, when it was overflowing its banks, and rooted those living in all the valleys to the east and west. Some from Benjamin and Judah also came to David's stronghold. David went out to meet them and said, If you come to me in peace and want to help me, then I will make an alliance with you. But if you come to betray me to my enemies when I have not harmed you, may the God of our ancestors take notice and judge. But a spirit empowered Amasai, the leader of the thirty warriors, and he said, We are yours, O David. We support you, O son of Jesse. May you greatly prosper. May those who help you prosper. Indeed, your God helps you. So David accepted them and made them leaders of raiding bands. Some men from Manasseh joined David when he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But in the end, they did not help the Philistines because, after taking counsel, the Philistines' lord sent David away, saying, It would be disastrous for us if he deserts to his master Saul. When David went to Ziklag, the men of Manasseh who joined him were Adnak, Josabad, Jedi Al, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai, leaders of a thousand soldiers each in the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David fight against raiding bands for all of them were warriors and leaders in the army. Each day men came to help David until his army became very large. The following is a record of the armed warriors who came with their leaders and joined David in Hebron in order to make David king in Saul's place, in accordance with the Lord's decree. From Judah came 6,800 trained warriors carrying shields and spears. From Simeon there were 7,100 warriors. From Levi there were 4,600. Jehoiada, the leader of Aaron's descendants, brought 3,700 men with him, along with Zadok, a young warrior, and 22 leaders from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's tribe, there were 3,000, most of whom up to that time had been loyal to Saul. From Ephraim, there were 20,800 warriors who had brought fame to their families. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, there were 18,000 who had been designated by name to come and make David king. From Issachar, there were 200 leaders and all their relatives at their command. They understood the times and knew what Israel should do. 
From Zebulun there were 50,000 warriors who were prepared for battle, equipped with all kinds of weapons and ready to give their undivided loyalty. From Naphtali there were 1,000 officers along with 37,000 men carrying shields and spears. From Dan there were 28,600 men prepared for battle. From Asher there were 40,000 warriors prepared for battle. From the other side of the Jordan, from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, there were 120,000 men armed with all kinds of weapons. All these men were warriors who were ready to march. They came to Hebron to make David king over all Israel by acclamation. All the rest of the Israelites also were in agreement that David should become king. They spent three days feasting there with David, for their relatives had given them provisions. Also their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali were bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were large supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisins, wine, olive oil, beef, and lamb, for Israel was celebrating. David consulted with his military officers, including those who led groups of a thousand and those who led groups of a hundred. David said to the whole Israelite assembly, If you so desire, and the Lord God our approves, let's spread the word to our brothers who remain in all the regions of Israel and to the priests and Levites in their cities so they may join us. Let's move the ark of our God back here, for we did not seek his will throughout Saul's reign. The whole assembly agreed to do this, for the proposal seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel from the Shihor River in Egypt to Lebo Hamath to bring the Ark of God from Kiriath Jerim. David and all Israel went up to Baala, that is Kiriath Jerim in Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God the Lord, who sits enthroned between the cherubim, the Ark that is called by his name. They transported the Ark on a new cart from the house of Abinadab. Uzzah and Ahio were guiding the cart, while David and all Israel were energetically celebrating before God, singing and playing various stringed instruments, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. When they arrived at the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to take hold of the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord was so furious with Uzzah, he killed him because he reached out his hand and touched the ark. He died right there before God. David was angry because the Lord attacked Uzzah, so he called that place Perez Uzzah, which remains its name to this very day. David was afraid of God that day and said, How will I ever be able to bring the ark of God up here? So David did not move the ark to the city of David. He left it in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained in Obed-Edom's house for three months. The Lord blessed Obed-Edom's family and everything that belonged to him. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stone masons, and carpenters to build a palace for him. David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that he had elevated his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David married more wives and fathered more sons and daughters. These are the names of children born to him in Jerusalem, Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpilet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhiah, Elishema, Bealiada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of all Israel, all the Philistines marched up to confront him. When David heard about it, he marched out against them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. David asked God, Should I march up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord said to him, March up, and I will hand them over to you. So they marched against baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. David said, Using me as his instrument, God has burst out against my enemies like water burst out. So that place is called Baal Purism.
The Philistines left their idols there, so David ordered that they be burned. The Philistines again raided the valley, so David again asked God what he should do. This time God told him, Don't march up after them. Circle around them and come against them in front of the trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the trees, then attack. For at that moment the Lord is going before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. David did just as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army from Gibeon to Gezer. So David became famous in all the lands. The Lord caused all the nations to fear him. God, I always love stories about David. Just imagining all those armies lining up for David. Ah, it, it just seems like this gigantic parade of, of soldiers in full gear with their spears and their shields. And wow, just so impressive. All these people pledging allegiance to David because they knew that you had appointed him. That's just, that's just kind of overwhelming. <laughs> that's just awesome. But I keep going back to the part where uh, David becomes upset with you, which is always humorous because I do that same stuff where I get mad at you for <laughs> no reason. Well, not for any valid reason. Um, but it's back where Uzzah um, is with the ark and the oxen stumble and he reaches out to catch the ark and in doing so, uh, receives your disapproval immediately and is killed and David is angry at you because you attacked Uzzah um, but he also fears you in that same process and I think how often I think so often how we're like David where we have this arrogance that you very specifically told them how the ark was to be carried it definitely wasn't by oxen uh, and yet David was doing part of it right. He was being reverent in the sense of wanting to bring the ark uh, to the people and was singing and celebrating in a joyful manner for you. Yet you are really clear with us. You don't ask for 75% obedience. You ask for 100% obedience. And you're very clear about that. We don't get to do 75% your way and 25% our way. That's not how you work. And it's very clear here. And then when you won't let us have at least a little bit of our way, we throw a tantrum like David did when he was angry at you for killing Uzzah. Um, thankfully, that fear also comes a lot of times with that of understanding, holy cow, I have gotten lulled into my sense of Christianity. I have forgotten who this sovereign God is who I worship, how big he is. We keep trying to make him small like our world, something that makes sense. And God, you are so gigantic. We only have to go to the beach or look up at the stars or, or see the amazing wonder of a little tiny flower to realize just how big you are and how amazing you are that you work in our lives on a daily basis, minute by minute. Uh, intentionally loving us, giving us mercy, disciplining us. It's just incredible. God, I just ask today that we're just aware of that 25% of that. We are praising you. We are worshiping you. We are doing what you've asked us to do, except for a couple of things we still want to hold on to and do ourselves. <laughs> Because I know that never works out. I want to be all to you. I want to give you my all. There's, there's no point in keeping anything that, that I come up with. I want to do your will. I want to live the life you have for me. I just want to be everything you created me to be, God. So when I come up with that 25% of a good idea to keep control over the part that makes sense to me, would you gently or very uh, aggressively <laughs> remind me that that 25% isn't mine to do what I want with? It wasn't David's to put the ark on uh, oxen and, and move it that way. And David's lucky he didn't die in that process. God, remind me. Please don't kill me, but remind me when I'm doing that, that control thing, when I'm wanting 
the outcome to be the way I want it to. I want to do things my way instead of your way. And don't allow me to be lulled into this false illusion that I am following your will by doing, gosh, a good three-fourths of it. That's never going, <laughs> I know, that's never going to work. God, thank you for the strength and the desire to do what pleases you. In your son's name I pray, amen. Thank you.